Hey, hi. Hi, everyone. Thank you for coming today. So, I want to welcome the guests and the members of the Whitefield Toastmasters Club. And uh, a brief introduction about myself. My name is Rajina Biswal. I'm going to be the Sergeant at Arm today. And my role is basically to provide the ground rules and some of the points that you need to remember for the rest of the meeting. So, I'm going to start with the first and the most important is whoever's coming to speak here. Uh, please ensure that we refrain from topics about sex, religion, or politics, or avoid any comments that are racially discriminated or uh, sexist. The second point uh, that I wanted to cover is that we would uh, be recording this entire session. So in case someone doesn't want to be recorded, you can let us know and we pause the recording. Uh, the third is that uh, we really request that people do not talk among themselves uh, while people are speaking here. Uh, the next is that there would be a voting at the end of the meeting and it would be a manual voting uh, for the speakers and the evaluators. Uh, finally, I wanted to request everyone to put their mobile phones on silent, so I'll give you five seconds for that. Okay, done. <laughs> to give people a set of phone, please go ahead. <laughs> All right. Uh, one call out. There's a washroom outside, so it's called Health Club for women and males. So you can use it if you need. And there are waters on both sides in case you want to have water. Uh, I will uh, end the point with the mission, which is also here. Uh, so the mission of the Toastmaster Club is to provide a mutually supportive and positive learning environment. So in which every individual member has the opportunity to develop their oral communication and leadership skills which is, uh, which in turn fosters self-confidence and personal growth. So with this, I would like to introduce the presiding officer of today's meeting. Uh, so we have Muzahir. And before I call him on, I'll give a small brief about him. Uh, so I've been here for almost a month. And every time I've heard Muzahir speak, I am in awe of his oratory skills. So he brings a new and fresh perspective every time he comes on with every role that he takes. So, yeah, we're looking forward to see what he has to do. All right. Thank you, Richara. Can we have a better round of applause for Richara, please? Right. Uh, the reason why I requested is because she is doing this role for the very first time. So thank you once again, Richard, for taking up this Arjun at arm. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. All right. You're as low as the voter turnout in the country. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Superb. I, Mazahir, as presiding officer for Whitefield Toastmaster, would like to officially open the meeting number 67. Thank you so much. Uh, right hand side is my paid supporter, left hand side are still sleepy. So we'll wake you up, right? Um, is there anybody who's attending our meeting as a guest for the first time? Thank you. So uh, we would request you to kindly stand where you are sitting right now. Tell us your name, how you got to know about Whitefield Toastmaster and what's that one thing you're planning to learn in today's meeting? Um. Yeah, hello, my name is Shweta. Uh, I came to know about Toastmasters uh, like, um, uh, online and a few friends also. Uh, and I'm looking forward for like uh, uh, maybe kind of leadership skills and, and uh, the communication skills. Thank you. Welcome. Scala is the name of the company, right? Mm -hmm. Scala is the name of the company? No, no, Scala is Eckhart Builders. Eckhart Builders. One is a digital platform. Yes. Okay. okay, yeah. And I think this is just for improving my personal growth and the communication skills and the presentation skills. Sure. Welcome. Welcome. Oh, so, because she already said hi to me, I know her. But what we are doing is, just before you, there were two people who just simply introduced themselves as a guest, considering they are coming for our meeting officially for the first time. So I would like to request you to please stand. Tell us your name, how you got to know about Whitefield Toastmaster, and what's that one thing or one or two things that you want to learn from today's meeting? Thank you. 
Thank you. Welcome. Anyone on my right hand side who is attending the meeting for the first time? No? Cool. So as the presiding officer, I do happen to have a few announcements and important updates which I will provide towards the end of the meeting. Considering I'm playing a, a dual hat today, I am also happen to be a Toastmaster today. So I will not go ahead and introduce myself because I will become too much of a self-praising and what not possible. Right? All with me? Yes. Sometimes as they say, you know, the introduction is as, uh, you know, it's longer than your entire script that you are about to say. So I will not waste my time on that. And uh, I would like to directly jump on to the Toastmaster of the day part. And with that, I'll actually say first, greetings everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Greetings everyone. Good morning. Everybody's confused. See, well, that's what happens, right? You all have that fear as to what am I supposed to say when somebody says something else. I like the way how Aravindan comes over here and he says hello. So the natural reaction to a hello is? Hello. Hi. Hi. Super. <laughs> the worst case scenario becomes when we as a community, I have noticed this, especially in our community, I'm not going to you know, go by the country or a region. When you cannot hear the other person on the phone, you change your hellos a lot, don't you? Yes. Like, hello? 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 <laughs> it does happen, right? Don't look at me like I'm the only guy who does it. Everybody does it, right? What really happens if we're trying to be slightly more confident in terms of either raising our voice or saying, okay, can we do it better? Can the person still hear me or not? Considering I travel every day, every day I travel from uh, Kalyanagar to Brookfield and I know the points where the network drops. If I'm going to call with family, I don't even tell them because the phone goes silent. <laughs> so I can understand nothing much, nothing important that happens, right? And then it comes back. Now, sometimes they reverse the question. You heard what we said. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. Same point. And then, um, you know, they just ask me a question again and I will not know. Now, what am I doing? I'm just trying to be confident. Confidence is something that comes to a lot of people slightly natural. To a lot of us, including myself, we need to work on it. Especially when on a stage like that. To a lot of people, confidence doesn't come natural. To a lot of people, imagine if they lose a part of their body while practicing something or doing something. How do you think the confidence can come back to them? I would definitely like to mention one such member in our club, Toastmaster Gobi sir, um, who doesn't have one of his hands. But the things that he does without even, you know, losing, with, without, without not having one of his limbs with him, it doesn't reflect anybody. But I will not go too far. I will not go too far. There was this character or there is this person, right? who was in the army back in his days. Settle down, I'll start my story again. So you know the precision that it takes to shoot? Anybody? Have you guys heard of Olympics? All of you? Yeah. Olympics, yes? yes? Olympics? Olympics, have you guys heard about Olympics? Super, okay. Now my guests are on the same level as me. Okay, Olympics? So you know there is this, uh, there are various sports that takes place. It could be swimming, it could be racing, it could be example, any sort of game. There is another game called shooting. Right? It does happen. Now imagine the precision, the hole that you need to have in your hand. There was this army man who once wanted to try shooting at the Olympic. The army commandant, the top officers told there is a rule in army, in our army, wherein you cannot attempt it if you are a level above that. It gives you the undue advantage. This guy couldn't do it at all. But he kept practicing. He practiced so much so that he became so good. And one day, while practicing, this man was a right hand man. Now imagine this. Okay. He was trying to shoot to a target. Something unfortunate happens and he loses that hand. Now imagine you're doing things every day at your house. You're a right hand person. Suddenly you realize that is gone. Imagine the pain that you go through. This guy was passionate. He was shooting. He wanted to win at Olympic. 
right hand shooter a shooting happens mostly with the right hand with a revolver this guy didn't give up he practiced so much so that he only could now rely on his left hand because the right hand wasn't known whether he'll be able to achieve what he wanted or not I'll cover that up the theme for today's meeting it's about confidence and believing these two go hand in hand first you got to believe that you can do it second the confidence and there are so many elements that brings that bridge together in toastmaster there are various aspects that we touch upon it's a platform where we request people to come on the stage do better in terms of their communication their leadership their impromptu uh, listening skill and what not possible as a toastmaster of the day i would like to set the agenda for today's meeting because i saw somebody posted a message in the guest group saying what's the agenda of today's meeting a toastmaster meeting usually is divided into three simple sections there are six so three first is a prepared speech let's say i need to come over here deliver a talk on a topic of sustainability i know what i'm going to speak i'm i came prepared i'll deliver it prepared speech the first segment the second one is where we challenge you to volunteer yourself whether you're a member or a guest raise your hand volunteer yourself pick up a topic provided to you by somebody who we call a table topic master this person will read the topic to you on the spot think through think on your feet for about 5 to 10 seconds gather your thoughts and deliver that's table topics section and the third and somebody uses this quote a lot i know a lot of people who use this quote a lot but this is one of definitely my favorite because they do say feedback is the breakfast for champion now it's easier said than done you can say feedback is the breakfast of champion what does it mean by that a lot of us cannot survive without breakfast can we right we came over here we needed some energy we needed to have something at least in the morning before we could turn up over here we did that right to get to get that energy to get to a level where you can function better feedback is important so the third segment of our meeting is called general evaluation or an evaluation section where we provide feedback to people who are coming on the stage talking and delivering whether they are ice break whether they are speeches whether they are table topics or as simple as just taking up a role because you can come all you can speak all you want but if you will not hear a feedback you won't know where to improve agree with me yes i wear two rings in my right hand side by the way and i out of nervousness used to do this exactly she just did that right there she's actually changed the ring okay i did that i used to do it a lot of time i won't even know literally like this and then they said mazari you also do this i keep fiddling with my specs as well feedback which was given to me so i improved on that now to take this meeting forward considering the feedback session will be led by me in today's meeting we don't have a general evaluator but i'll be doing the honors to call the evaluators later as well as a tag team so i'll become all in one today all with me you see there is a reason why i wore this kurta how many times I mean, people who know me how many times have you seen me wearing a black kurta ever no never sarvan just approved anybody else who can testify of wore a black kurta revti like why is this man self praising himself <laughs> i don't even know him okay but considering i'm playing a dual role and a lot of others now what we'll do we will move on to the helping hands of this meeting meeting is getting recorded but there's somebody else also who's keeping a time check for today's meeting somebody who will now explain what needs to be done to better check the time management for the entire meeting with your thunderous round of applause let me welcome the timers for today's meeting toastmaster arvind so how many of you think that 30 seconds or 1 minute late is not a big deal here raise your hand 30 seconds or 1 minute is not a big deal for me i can go late or i can attend the meeting late <laughs> <laughs> okay so yeah for those who raised your hand i will tell a small st- small incident 
ड्यूरींग द नयटी सिक्सटी नईन द अपलो लवन मून लैंडिंग मिशन आस्ट्रोनाइड नईल आम स्ट्रांग हि वास् दन पैलट द एगल द लैंडर इज कॉल एगल and uh, when he about to land to the moon uh, there was like overloading in the computer server that server could not find the actual place for landing the moon so uh, the fuel was like about to end maybe 30 or uh, for one minute only fuel left it was about to end he he handled that situation and he he landed the moon at he landed the lunar at the moon surface and uh, because of that 30 second if he let we we could not never hear the man a uh, name called neil armstrong so that's how timing is important good morning fellow to masters and guests i'm the timer for the today role uh, there are three sec- four sections for the timing one is prepared speeches for the prepared speeches timing is 5 to 7 minutes at 5 minutes i will show the green card and at 6 minutes i will show the yellow card and at 7 minutes i will show the red card there will be 30 seconds of grace period and i think we have today we have ice breaker speech for ice breaker speech the timing is 4 to 6 minutes again 4 minutes i will show the green card and 5 minutes i will show the yellow card and 6 minutes i will show the red card and there will be 30 seconds of grace period and for table topic session the timing is 1 to 2 minutes for 1 minute i will show the green card for 1 minutes 30 seconds i will show the yellow card for 2 minutes i will show the red card and for evaluation we have 2 to 3 minutes Two, for, at the two minutes, I will show the green card, and two minutes thirty seconds, I will show the yellow card, and at three minutes, I will show the red card. Uh, like for everything, we have thirty seconds of grace period. So please listen me. At, I will standing here and showing this card. Please listen to me. Thank you. Back to you. <laughs> So, how many of you uh, know this um, famous YouTuber personality, uh, ex-entrepreneur named Ankur Variko? Heard about Ankur Variko? No? So, like, okay, midway. So, Ankur Variko does a lot of talk on uh, finance. He does a lot of talk on planning. He talk. He talks a lot about a uh, um, a lot of good things. And one such day, he was called at Adobe Toastmasters Club, Noida. And his um, talk was about uh, time management. Uh, matter of fact, and you can see the recording is there on YouTube. And he says, uh, "It's an irony that I was supposed to deliver a session on time management, and I myself is late." <laughs> so do not delay it. When Ankur Varko was speaking on the stage, he did talk about how to speak confident and to speak confident and better. You may want to avoid a couple of filler that we use in general. We have someone who's noting just that down for you. and i would like to welcome the r counter for today's meeting to take the proceeding further so then over to you thank you thank you sir good morning everyone good morning i am saravanan here today i have taken the role of r counter so i will be noting down the crutch words like a um r r and also i will be listening to the filler words or sentences like you know okay right something like that okay i will note down all these words for prepared speakers table topics and evaluators i will present the report at the end of the meeting when called upon by the general evaluator thank, thank you in one of my previous clubs there was this person who was sitting this was a corporate and she was sitting with with the laptop and she was making these graphs and weird and what not possible i was thinking oh no At Toastmaster meeting, also you need to work. Until she actually came on the stage, and she showed the graph of all the R's and ums uttered during the meeting. I was one of the highest, believe me or not. I was one of the highest, only for me to realize what are my repetitive words. At times in our day-to-day life, we get these words and things that we basically use without even knowing, unconsciously. You must have heard a friend who used a lot of like. like you know what i'm saying just like that macha <laughs> can be one of them now why am i saying that all of these english words and suddenly there was a slang that i have used because when you're speaking what you speak can be considered good the moment you make a mistake while speaking that will be noticed this board is black in nature but if you want to just put down a white circle right here you will not notice the entire black board you will notice a circle which is there in white to help us speak better 
do better in terms of suggestion. We, in our Toastmaster meeting, happen to have a special role player which is part of the tag team. Timer, our counter and the third one goes for Grammarian. Let me now welcome and let's give a round of applause for this person, Toastmaster Amal as Grammarian. Good morning fellow Toastmasters and dear guests, this is Amal Nag. So I will be playing the role of uh, Grammarian today. Just to provide the context, uh, for any condiments, tea, coffee or any food items rather, if you don't have the correct ingredients or you can say that if you put, uh, don't put the proper uh, uh, proportion of the ingredients, you will not get the desired taste, right? So similarly, uh, grammar is one of the most important ingredient or you can say it is one of the most important prerequisites for any speech. Grammar provides structure to language and it makes communication meaningful and understandable. Without grammar, we, we, if we say some words or some a set of words to make a sentence, we will not be able to predict whether it is in the present, in the future or in the past, right? So we will have to use proper grammar as well as the words that you are using uh, to make that sentence or frame that sentence. So as a grammarian, I will be uh, listening carefully to all the speeches, observing and reporting any discrepancy with respect to the usage of the grammar and I will be providing uh, that report during the evolution round. So thank you. Word of the day, do you have it? Yeah. yeah. So, um, I just he told me to provide the word of the day. So, I'll uh, one word that comes to my mind uh, that is something called resonance. So, it is if you heard like people say often that walk the talk, or if you want to do something, you show it first so that others can follow you. So um, that resonance will be something that when I say I want to uh, build one simple uh, say robot and uh, I want to showcase that to say our students. First you will have to put your uh, hand on that right. You have to feel uh, put your hands and try something to make out that robot. So that is where you that that is called resonance, right? Like you are you are trying to showcase that. Okay, I I am uh, doing the things. I am showing the the thing how it can be uh, done. So that is where uh, probably we can use the resonance word. So that what you are talking, it is actually reflecting in your action. Yeah. So that's all from my end. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So the entire tag team is basically going to do the walk the talk or resonance is what they call it, right? So what we're going to do is, yeah, yeah. So some people you might be noticing that they are just simply raising their thumbs up. Anyone who uses the word of the day on the stage as a, as a show of an appreciation, can we all do a thumbs up? Yes. So we're going to try in one, two, three. We're going to try in one, two, three. I can't even see his hand. Okay. <laughs> Cool. Now remember, as a Toastmaster of the day, I explained there are three segments in today's meeting. Prepared speech, table topics and evaluation. To begin with the first section of today's meeting, I would like to introduce that there are two speakers that we have delivering different level and objective of speeches. So that you can understand it better, I would like to introduce the speech evaluator for the first speech, I would like to request the evaluator number one, Toastmaster Monica, to please come over here and read the speech objective. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Today, I am evaluating someone who is delivering L1P1, that is the icebreaker speech in this meeting. The objective of that uh, uh, icebreaker speech is to introduce himself or herself to the club and learn the basic structure of the public speech. The speech time is 4 to 6 seconds and as this is 4 to 6 minutes sorry <laughs> <laughs> and the, as this is an icebreaker speech so I would request you all to uh, just stand up and clap after he finishes the speech. 
थैंक यू So Monica has made my job easy. She has said everything that was supposed to be. But in case if you misheard or didn't hear it, the objective of this speech is for member to introduce himself or herself. Especially in the corporates, whenever there are two teams that meet together, the very first thing that happens is superb. And how do we do it? Is very simple. Hi, my name is X Y Z. I'm part of this team. I work under this particular line of business. Now this is where Monica was right. It should not exceed more than four to six seconds. <laughs> <laughs> And I don't want to quote a friend of mine. He might be listening to me on a recording though. <laughs> When they asked him for introduction, he only gave his name. And they said, "No, no, speak more." He said, "I love listening." <laughs> With those smiling faces, I would like all of you to give a huge round of applause. And let's welcome the speaker number one on the stage. Master Kanda, compete, compare with oneself, and conquer anything. Compete, compare with oneself, and conquer anything. Those Master Kanda. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. My dear. those master of the day and fellow those masters and dear guests today i am going to give a wonderful captivating story about a boy from village he was born and brought up in a triangle village of pulgilla in telangana state he lives with his parents sister and his extended family his mother is a homemaker father is a passionate farmer His schooling was up to ninth standard. He is in his own and neighboring villages. One thing to mention here is, in his first school, instilled a discipline by guiding through the daily routines. Wake up in the morning for him, engaging in prayer, reading, as well going to the school very needless, playing with friends daily. That is a one of the most important. in his life that carried over and over the his schooling is from 10th to 12th is happened in his hostel one of the pain point for him leaving his village parents and friends and his childhood days was really filled with lot of fun with playing with friends fishing and swimming in the rivers and wells as well watching a village dramas and engaging in playing with cards and uh, other play coming to this one reason for going to the hostel is he was very much apprehension about 10th standard board exams that motivated him to go to the hostel and he stood third in his school even on top of a warning given by the school if he is not performed he will be sitting in a private that again boosted his confidence in 11th and 12th continued his journey and stopped comparing with others and started competing with himself that made him to become a topper in his college and that awarded him a gold medal with vice chancellor that was a one of the thing he learned that compete and compare with himself and then you can achieve anything coming to this engineering he began with his another challenge was his a communication before he was doing all his education in telugu medium all of sudden it came to english medium with that he was using telugu to english dictionary to aid his understanding and finally achieved a marvelous score 73 percentage with distinction so that is a one part of his education up to engineering coming to his career also is again with his problem with the communication he was he could not able to 
get his job in his dream company Infosys and instead he got a job in public sector company. Later he transitioned his career into IT industry. Further his continued education is in MS software systems and currently is pursuing his MA in psychology to aid the problems faced by the individuals in industrial psychological hurdles. Coming to this next path, he is interested in extensive engaging in self-help books and as well engaging in writing. That motivated him helping the students and coming out of their challenges, he just culminated in the publication of his debut book, a title with Ingenious Minds, a roadmap for engineering success. This book helps him engineering students to achieve their success in academics as well, their career readiness. And his next journey is continued with his another transition into another career that is moving to his career from corporate to the coaching and counseling and helping the engineering students and the job seekers to get success in their career and academic success. So coming to this journey, apart from that, his education coming to this corporate world made him to that after spending 26 years in different domains, embedded banking, insurance and storage domains, he wanted to come out and help the people. Coming to his personal life, he is happily married with two wonderful sons residing in Bangalore. If anybody comes to him, ask for any suggestions, always one thing he says that comparing, competing with oneself and conquer anything. And the protagonist in this story is none other than is myself, Honda Samba Shudu, standing here with your heartfelt gratitude and unwavering support. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day. God bless you. I love those story where the protagonist uh, himself or herself plays uh, the whole part of narrating the entire thing and you become so curious to know what's going to happen, who is this person and then he or she reveals themselves. Not often but sometimes they are themselves, sometimes it's about somebody else, right? Cool. Uh, one thing that I absolutely uh, you know, loved about your speech is how openly you told things about yourself and then you had a book. Now that made me think about a question that I actually was thinking when I was standing behind. That if, and I would like to have at least two or three volunteers for this activity, think through, I'm going to give you a few seconds. If you got to write your own autobiography, what is going to be the title of your book? If you have an option to write your own autobiography, what is going to be the title of your book? Now don't be lame, just don't call your name there. Like, I don't never know if there's any... Never give up. Never give up. Okay, John Cena. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Yes, Akshay. Self-doubt is a curse. Self-doubt is a curse. Okay, cool. Guys, this meeting is recorded. I was Akshay, by the way, and the first one was Arvindan. So nobody takes it. These are trademarks. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Uh, anybody on my left? Okay. Nice. Eat, sleep, and drink cricket. To the eyes and experience of a cricket level. And your name is? Saurabh. Saurabh. Okay, guys, that was Saurabh. So nobody steals that. Okay, anybody else? Because that was a right, lovely one. I think that encouraged me to ask more questions to my left side. Sukesh. Just one life. Enjoy. Just see, I somehow knew. <laughs> okay, I somehow knew. Sukesh had those words right here. And he's just waiting for me to point out and say, can you? What a wonderful title. Okay, what was it? Just? Yeah, just one life. 
just one life dot 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 enjoy <laughs> exclamation okay anybody else i'm getting all excited about this anybody else no with his thought what he said about you know drink uh, one of, it reminded me one of my uh, geography teacher back in the days and he used to talk a lot about uh, social practices and best of livings as well so he once told that drink your food eat your water right as kids we could understand but it just made me realize much later that we need to chew our food really well so drink your food chew your water and that stayed with me until today so i think if at all if it has to come to me if i need to choose a title for my autobiography i'm just going to simply call it failure and the first page i'll say read more to know about it <laughs> <laughs> having said that let's move on now to the second prepared speech for today's meeting and to provide the objective for the speech let me now welcome the speech evaluator number 2 toastmaster rakshan thank you so much Good morning guys Good morning okay uh, before i start with my evaluation like uh, whom i am evaluating today i just like to mention that that book is written by konda sir only he is uh, the author of that book if uh, that is not uh, cleared yet okay cool moving uh, on to the evaluation part i'll be evaluating toastmaster revithi today she is attempting level 1 project 3 from path leadership development and the project says that he she has to take care of the vocal variety and the body language like practicing the vocal variety like the highs and the lows in the speech and the body language the non verbal communication kind of a thing so she has to take care of the resonance between the pitch pace tone and volume all the best revithi over to you thank you thank you so much without further delay or ado let me now welcome the speaker number 2 for today's meeting requesting the speaker to please come on the stage can we have a round of applause for speaker number 2 Toastmaster Revithi therefore right hand side is not equal to left hand side therefore right hand side is not equal to left hand side toastmaster revithi are you sure you can handle it engineering is a tough field you need to think about something else girls are not good at maths and science hmm anyway you will end up quitting in between these were the responses maya got when she started her engineering maya was a curious and determined girl she was fascinated by how things worked she spent her free time reading about books on engineering and she attended local science fairs to understand to learn more about engineering maya wants to become an engineer one day but her journey to become an engineering had lots of challenges with her determination and hard work she graduated from a top college in very good marks she landed at her dream job in bangalore dear fellow toastmasters and guest take a moment to think who is maya in your circle please feel free to shout out some names myself 
शिवानी थैंक यू माया स्टोरी इंस्पायर्ड एनी वन हु ट्राई टू pursue their passion and face challenges in their journey now i will talk about revadi revadi has completed her engineering from a reputed college in kerala she has she has completed her engineering with very good marks and she landed in her job in bangalore she did her masters in engineering from the prestigious birla institute of science how do you feel about revathi a typical profile you see every day in your day to life in bangalore isn't it but let me add few things here revathi is the first engineer from 1000 plus member tatra family it's her mother's family she is the first woman engineer from 1000 plus member varakodan family that's her father's family she is the first engineer from section d of 50 plus year old durga higher secondary school in her place now dear fellow toastmasters and guests are you able to see maya in revathi yes yes you are wrong hmm? <laughs> revathi tatra she was never passionate about engineering <laughs> <laughs> when she completed her 12th standard she had only three options engineering medicine and do nothing <laughs> she was tempted for the third option <laughs> but in order to ensure she exist she chosen engineering so dear fellow toastmasters and guests don't fall into the trap of assumptions and judgments <laughs> each one of us is a tapestry of experiences dreams and choices <coughs> let us embrace the diversity of human experience and let us celebrate the myriad of myriad of experiences that lead us into our destinies dear fellow toastmasters and guests remember the in the grand equation of life right hand side is never equal to let left hand side for therein the for therein the the life the beauty of our individuality thank you everyone over to toastmaster masahi oh my goodness such powerful uh, speech and uh, i have a friend named maya maya and kids are listening maya mishra is her name she is in uh, purdue right now uh once we ask maya to speak about herself and i think she will definitely choose the option number 3 do nothing <laughs> right um and absolutely you know i had goosebumps by the way listening to you when you said so many members in the family and you turned out to be the the first one and there's a cousin of mine basically and uh, there is this village of my mother's side we are from bareilly basically from mother's side and then our village is about 37 odd kilometers inside of bareilly which is the way towards pilibhi So this guy, the cousin of mine, is the first engineer going to be from the entire village. So I can totally relate to what you were saying, right? The amount of happiness. But I will definitely ask him whether he wanted to choose the option number three or not. <laughs> right? We will now move on with the uh, second part of the Toastmaster session, which is the table topic. But before that, 
let me now tell you a just a little bit more about the theme that I was covering on. How many of you guys remember what I was speaking earlier? Or Mazahir just comes over here and he blabbers. <laughs> <laughs> Confidence believing, right? The person who I was referring to, his name is Karoli Takas. This guy is a Hungarian. And he was the first one to win an Olympic medal with their non-dominant hand in shooting. Get that sink in. Non-dominant hand. At times we feel that speaking impromptu is something we're not good at. Now imagine this guy who lost his hand with a defective grenade. The entire hand shattered the right hand side that he was good at. Picture that. And he started practicing with his left hand. Maybe he got better. What kind of wonder did he do? I'll talk about that just in some time. But remember, if you're thinking that coming on the stage and speaking impromptu is your obstacle, think about this person. To take the second segment forward, we have somebody who we call a table topics master. This person will provide the topics impromptu and I'm sure there's a lot that this person has. I will not steal the thunder from this wonderful person requesting the table topics master to please come on the stage. Thank you, Toastmaster Dhrim Azahir. Good afternoon, everybody. How are we doing? Great. I hope you guys are excited for a fun-filled segment called Table Topics Master. Yes? A big yes? Yes. Great. So, Table Topic is one such exciting segment of any Toastmasters meeting. Why? Because your members as well as guests are welcome to share their perspective of, on the given topic. Number two, there is, no, there is nothing planned, there is no speech, everything off the cuff. You get the opportunity to speak your thoughts and share some funny and witty comments. Uh, okay, those uh, of you who are unfamiliar with table topic segment, here is uh, how it will work. I'll present you a topic. You will have one to two minutes to talk about the same. As our timer uh, stated, at the end of one minute, a green card will be raised. At the end of one minute, 30 seconds, an orange card will be raised. And at the end of two minutes, a red card will be raised. Please note, the time allotted to this particular speech is one to two minutes. Try to be in the time limit. And uh, let the fun begin. I mean, let the table topics begin. I'll select speakers randomly or in a different way today. Ready? Yes. Perfect. First one is for member. <clears throat> Any member who has not taken the stage in the month of April, please raise your hand. So we have our first table topic speaker, Toastmaster Sukesh. Thank you, Toastmaster Sukes. This segment is all about perspective. I'll give you a scenario mm -hmm. and then topic. You have to talk from that perspective. Explain that perspective. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Okay. First, the scenario. Imagine you are an aunt. A-N-T aunt. Share your perspective on, on what it is like navigating a picnic table filled with crumbs and giant feet. Again, imagine you're an aunt, share your perspective on what it's like navigating a picnic table filled with crumbs and giant fit. Topic, Toastmaster Sukesh, the aunt's point of view. The aunt's point of view, Toastmaster Sukesh. Thank you. It's, it is jackfruit, right? Anything. Okay, fine. So, uh, there is a story. Um, kids in school, uh, I think UP level or LP level, they ask, sir, Sir, why people are all getting married? Sir got stuck. No. How to explain a small kid how they are getting, you know, how why people are getting married. So, what Sir told, he told a story, simple. Many ants are walking in a line and they are going from one place to another place. Suddenly the first man 
first and he got a small smell of jackfruit. So he told, guys, you are standing here. I'll go and see what is there. He went there. You know, jackfruit, interesting thing, you know. It is very sweet, but same time there is a kind of a gum will be there if you cut it. So this ant went, he started eating, he stick on the gum. He was not able to come back. A second man told, okay guys you stand here, I will go and see what is happening there. He went, again he eat the sweet and stuck in the gum. Third man went, so sir told, it is simple like that, all are got married, they are there. And these guys don't know, they are trying to do it. Thank you all. Thank you, Sakesh. Thank you. Can we have a better round of applause for first ever topic speaker, Toshmasi Sakesh? All right. Uh, second one is for the guest. Any guest who has never participated in table topics and wants to give it a try. Please come. Let's have a huge round of applause for our guest one, speaker two. Hey this is my first session. Super, you'll do amazing. Your name? Saurabh. Saurabh, yeah. One minute, one minute, you have to do it this way. From here? Yeah. Ready, Saurav? Yes, <clears throat> Okay, Inter interesting one. The scenario. Share your experiences if you were a traffic light. What goes in the mind on the red of the red light during the rush hour? Again, the scenario, share your experiences if you were a traffic light. What goes in the mind of the red light during rush hour? Saurabh, life as a traffic light, life as a traffic light, Saurabh. Good afternoon, dear fellow Toastmasters. Uh, the topic that I have been given is how to act if I was a red traffic light. So. Uh, personally uh, thinking about the fact that if I was a red traffic light I would be thinking that uh, the people they are just not obeying what the traffic rules are uh, they are just simply uh, smashing uh, the red light in, in front of me uh, they are they are going absolutely berserk by not following the basic traffic rules they are exceeding the speed limits they are not uh, giving a, uh, a simple thing to what the traffic uh, rules are uh, sometimes it it could be a bit more than a bit annoying that uh, if i if i was a traffic light so what what should be done if people are not obeying the traffic signals uh, carefully and uh, and it's for their betterment that they should uh, obey the rules otherwise mishaps can happen or some sometimes accidents or uh, uh, or sometimes accidents or even deaths can occur so if i was a traffic light i would uh, basically uh, instruct people to obey the the traffic signals uh, uh, quite uh, respectively and correctly thank you all for lending your precious ears thank you it's his first table topic speech, everybody. He deserves the best. Thank you so much, Saurabh. Thank you. For sharing your experience as a traffic light. When I think about traffic light, right signal, I think about my mom. And my mom as a traffic light would definitely say, ah, oh, this is Radha. She'll never give up. She'll always be late. All right, third, uh, <clears throat> any member? Who has not taken up any role today? Please raise your hand. Sir, please raise your hand. <laughs> <laughs> please, please help me welcome our third speaker. Your scenario. Pick an animal and share a funny dialogue between you and that animal, giving us a glimpse into its unique perspective on life. 
scenario again. Pick an, anim an animal and share a funny dialogue between you and that animal, giving us a glimpse into its unique perspective of life. If, if animal could talk, if animal could talk, to Swansi Saro. I am a dog lover, so I will tell from the perspective of a dog. So he's been with me for 15 years, I think. So I will tell the scenario. Here comes my master. So I will go wagging my tail to him. And from my area, I, I been to office in uh, five, eight hours or nine hours. I get a relief. Yeah, yeah, that is why I'm coming for. And what about my treat? Are you coming without my any treat to me? <laughs> yeah, 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 we have. So, in those days when I had uh, dogs, we don't have uh, the package treat. So, we used to have some something at home, biscuit or maybe some sweet or uh, milk, cream. That is better for dog actually <laughs> than giving some processed food. And at the night time, hey, my master is so selfish. He is going to his bed without taking me. <laughs> And from my side, yeah, you're coming again. Again, my bell, bed will be, uh, will, will have hairs, and there will be odor. Hey, don't come. No, no. Why? What? Why, you, you, you just, uh, you are, you just brought me your home, and don't want to get me sleep in your bed. Is it possible? <laughs> I will come. So you, you sleep. Then after that, I will come and sleep with you. In the morning, uh, this is another scene. The morning, I say five. I I am an early waker. Actually, it is very early, uh, four four a.m. or five a.m. Hey, why don't you take me outside? You are already awake, isn't it? So I should take outside, and he enjoys. I whether whether it is in UP, it is a too cold or too hot. I see my dog always enjoying outside, always dragging tail and here and playing and jumping. So it gives me some relief. Uh, yeah, that is why my master is for. Uh, you will take me outside, you will give me a bath and all those things. Yeah, so <laughs> that's it. Thank you, Dr. Sarah. Thank you, thank you so much for sharing that experience. Uh, mosquito, consider an animal? No. No? But I want to talk about it. <laughs> if I get a chance to talk with that mosquito, the, that will definitely tell me rather please let me drink your drink your uh, blood and when and she'll definitely threaten me saying you know what no coil or no liquid will do anything to me so please don't try all right third is again a guest any guest who has not taken the stage in the month of april and wants to give a table topics please let's give a huge round applause for our fourth Table topic speakers. Your name? Trilogian. 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 All right. Trilogian, the scenario. If you had the superpower of invisibility, Describe the hilarious situation you would get into from a unique perspective. Scenario, if you had the superpower of invisibility, describe the hilarious situation you would get into from a unique perspective. Trilogian, invisible superpowers, invisible superpowers, Trilogian. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Trilogian. So good afternoon, all of you. So, I have uh, watched one movie like uh, Mr. India, I think. So, Anil Kavar is the, like that, right? Invisible. So, if I will get a chance, then when there is a traffic or something, if, if I will go to office or go to hometown or something, if there is a traffic, then I will be, I will try to do a invisible so that I can reach easily and uh, nobody can see. And if, uh, uh, if there is a, some uh, something happens like uh, uh, so suppose if i will go to so suppose there is a competition on the ground for running or playing something is there then if i will try to win or something then i will invisible and will go to like so like this but i am not getting what i can do <laughs> for uh, invisible 
and I'm not getting any. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for sharing your superpowers. But yeah, if I get that superpower, I will definitely go to Shah Rukh Khan's home and see what he's eating other than chicken. Okay, fourth, again a guest who has come to this meeting for the first time and wants to give an impromptu speech. Who wants to come? Let's give a huge round of applause for our fifth speaker. Your name? Mansa. Mansa. Mansa, the situation. Describe a day in the life of a pencil. Pencil. From the thrill of being sharpened to the agni of being chewed, provide a comical perspective. Describe a day in the life of a pencil. From the thrill of being sharpened to the agony of being chewed, provide a comical perspective. Mansa, the diary of a pencil. The diary of a pencil. Mansa. Okay. If I am a pencil, uh, if I write, I want to write something, uh, then uh, again shopping and again writing, I was kind of, uh, why you are doing this again and again? <laughs> That's because um, we don't want, uh, I do not prepare it. It's an impromptu, whatever you think about the pencil, what's going on is in its mind. Okay. Uh, whenever I short and I will write, I will just think that uh, please don't short me <laughs> because don't pin it. And uh, if I write something, I want to be a drawing uh, which I can um, a, in the pictorial format, uh, which I can um, be a twenty more seconds. Okay. What, do you do, what would you do if you were a pencil? I will just try. That's it. <laughs> okay. What else? What else we can do? Okay. okay. This is your done. Let's give it up for Mansa. Mansa. Thank you, Mansa. If I were a pencil belonging to Radha, I would say, don't buy me because you're not using me. You should use me because you bought me. You never do anything with that. And second thought about pencil that, you know, that simple pencil and the fancy pencil, like two rupees and 20 rupees, they would just brag like, you know what, I'm 20 rupees. And she's like, so what? I'm also two, I can do the same thing. So anything pencils can do, life of a pencil. All right, fifth one, sorry, sixth speaker. Anyone who is having his birthday in the net? <laughs> okay, anyone who is having his birthday in May, June? In, in November, we got a speaker, everybody. Yeah. Your name? Akshara. Akshara. Okay, the scenario. <coughs> Ima Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Imagine your favorite dish giving you a review based on how you ate it. What would, he, what would it say about your dining habits? Scenario. Imagine your favorite dish giving you a review based on how you ate it. What would it say about your dining habits? Akshara, if food could review us, if food could review us, Akshara. So, good afternoon all Toastmasters. Uh, so, I belong from Maharashtra and Puran Puli is one of the favorite food uh, which Maharashtra people prefer. So, I'll go with the perspective of Puran Puli. Like, uh, if we go, uh, if we travel 10 kilometers away, the habits of eating food changes a lot. Like, uh, suppose a Brahmin person is preparing a Puran Puli, okay? And uh, the family of Brahmin people, Brahmin family is having Puran Poli, they will have lot of ghee on it and uh, the ghee is like uh, you will eat ghee with uh, Puran Poli. But if you go with Ma Maratha people, then they have a very uh, spicy 
spicy curry and they will just chew in it and uh, and then they will eat so they will get a test of sweetness as well as spiciness so that is how like puran poli will say oh why people are diving me in the ghee oh why people are diving me in the spicy curry it's so hot and i can't just feel it right and when uh, one person eat that puran poli when he is uh, diving from his uh, digestion system so they it it is a very heavy food to get it digested so if one person have ate one uh, puran poli he can't get it two or three or more than that so uh, when he is digesting puran poli will just say oh this person have good digestion system <laughs> but <laughs> Uh, where like if you go a gymnastic person then he will able to digest it properly but if you think about a old age person and he is eating that then he, oh hilarious that uh, this whole journey is so difficult for me so this is how like uh, puran boli may think about this uh, and uh, this is what a perspective i would like to share thank you everyone thank you so much akshara <laughs> huh? what a beautiful take on puran boli it was sweet thank you so thank much, you so much. uh if i could or if my food could reviewers so whenever i have sambar in bangalore i try to not have it and at that time my sambar tells girl you are from gujarat you add sweet to every dish so please eat it properly <laughs> okay one chance to member any member who wants to give it a try raise your hand any white field toast masters club members want to give a try raise your hand Thank you so much. Speaker number seven, Arvindan. I will just take it. <laughs> uh, this one is uh, spe- specifically for you. Arvindan calls me Akka, so that's why I'm giving you this <coughs> scenario. discuss the humorous aspects of seeing the world from a child's perspective where everything is new and exciting scenario discuss the humorous aspects of seeing the world from a child's perspective where everything is new and exciting toastmaster arvindan the world from a child's eyes the world from a child's eyes toastmaster arvindan okay i will just take care of my timing also so good good afternoon to our masters and guest good afternoon yeah the topic given to me is uh, the world from the child aspect uh, child eye so the world is very large and have we have lot of technology when the child sees it's all is toy for them only nothing else right am i right it's all toy for them only whatever uh, whatever mixy whatever things we have it's all toy for them only because they want to play with them so like when we on mixy the sound is coming it's so it's get excited oh how the sound is coming we need to we are i also need to try and it it it, it, it used to like go to that and grab that mixy when we on the tv the picture will come it will think oh how the picture is coming oh it's something with toy so whenever we introduce the new things to the child it uh, it get excited and it want to use it no matter whatever it is even even though tv or even though vehicle whenever we trying let's say we are using the mobile it get excited okay how the pictures are changing let me try it and it it, it will grab that mobile from us so that's how the from the child perspective everything in the world is toy only so back to you thank you thank you for sharing that perspective of a child if i have to share a perspective of child that is my nephew who is just 4 years old he thinks whatever is in the house should be broken <laughs> all right i just have two topics so i want all the needed members to guests to raise their hand any ipl ipl fans please come your name okay okay scenario <coughs> discuss the funny and uh, the funny journey of a so- of a sock that shock not sock sorry mm-hmm. sorry sorry once again discuss the funny and uh, funny journey of a sock that always seems to disappear in the laundry and the adventurous it goes on while separated from its pair 
scenario discuss the funny journey of a sock that always seems to disappear in the laundry and the adventurous it goes on the it goes on while separated from its pair ankit the adventurous of a sock the adventurous of a sock ankit uh, hello thank you all uh, my name is ankit and uh, my topic is so interesting about socks right yeah very funny and it happens with everybody and it happens uh, with me a lot generally when when we are getting ready and we are getting late for catching a bus or something you will not find socks right and the the weird part is you will not find the the correct match one and many a time i have wore, i have worn you know the the bad pair so some white and one i picked that was black and that happens coming to the ipl right uh, i'll also uh, talk about that the incident if you talk about any player who is going going for you know batting so for an example we know all dhoni right jadeja got out now dhoni has to come up, come come to bat and he has not uh, he did not re, uh, he did not think that jadeja will get out so soon so he was not having pair of you know uh, socks all of sudden he took uh, all of sudden he got to know that yes jadeja is out and i have to go there he started finding hey where is my socks where is my socks <laughs> and and then he without any further ado put both the shoes without socks and this happens with i think everybody uh, you know when it comes to socks and uh, you know uh, when when we go uh, for for anything urgent so yeah thank you so much and thank you thank you mic mic oh sorry thank you for sharing that hilarious story from ipl also <clears throat> i think uh, if i have to talk about a missing sock i think nowadays they don't fear they're like buddy it's a it's a trend we go you know in different pairs so they're chilled now okay last one now the forum is open for anyone please come your name kumar kumar Kumar, uh, the scenario. Share the humorous thoughts of a GPS navigating through various unexpected routes and routes. Scenario. Share the humorous thoughts of a GPS uh, navigating through various unexpected routes. Okay. Kumar, inside the mind of a GPS. Inside the mind of a GPS, Kumar. Oh, so. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Kumar. Uh, I'm here to talk on uh, like what GPS will feel uh, while we are navigating. So let's say uh, we are in a, a new place uh, where we actually don't know the routes and we are following Google Maps or any other navigation uh, system. So it will be guide like there are uh, two roads. Uh, so it will ask us to which are like parallel roads. it will ask us to uh, you know take a road that is on the right side but unfortunately they go together so you by mistake seeing the map without zooming zooming you will take the left road so the gps itself will be thinking like what kind of dumb person are you why are you you know taking a wrong route so uh, even though i'm here to guide you uh, you're not following the simple guidelines so these are the uh, you know simple things that uh, human uh, you know doesn't follow even though uh, they are uh, instructed in a very nice way so not only that and uh, if we go to any hill station or anything gps will be like wondering why are you coming here there is nothing here just to see some you know a uh, mountain and trees uh, uh, you are torturing me even though there is no network here for me to guide you you have uh, set my uh, you know destination somewhere in city and uh, now i don't know whether uh, the traffic is there the same traffic is there or not it doesn't care uh, i mean it will be like wondering and uh, thinking in a humorous way in this form thank you all thank you kumar thank you so much for sharing the perspective of a gps thank you and congratulations to all the amazing speakers who took the opportunity to share their take on the given opportunities or given topics please remember there are no right or no wrong answers we are here to enjoy the journey of becoming a better speaker 
May I request you all to give a huge round of applause for our nine speakers, Sukesh, Saurav, Saurav, Trilogen, Mansa, Akshra, Arvindan, and Ankit. Congratulations. With that, I hand over the stage back to Toss Master. Bye bye. Maza hai. Thank you so much. Oh man, table topping is one of my favorite segment. Why so? It's because I can sit right there. And after a topic is given to a person, I think, oh, I wish that was my topic. <laughs> oh, I could have spoken that much about it, right? That, does, that definitely does happen. It happens to me and I'm sure it does happen to all of us. However, what a wonderful way that you conducted the table topic segment rather. Thank you so much for that. Are you all excited to hear about how our speakers did today? Yes. Yes? Yes. Answer like yes. <laughs> now it's time for me to hear the evaluation. It's time for us to hear the evaluation. So let me now request the speech evaluator number one to please come on the stage and provide your speech evaluation for the speaker number one. Hello everyone. Hello. I was evaluating uh, Toastmaster Konda for his icebreaker speech. I first want to congratulate you to complete your icebreaker speech and it was a wonderful speech, a good story and a structure. It was well binded. It was a fluent speech all throughout. The, there was no such uh, uncomfortable pauses. So there was a fluent speech uh, altogether and totally relatable with the topic. Whatever topic you uh, choose, like uh, compete, compare with oneself and conquer. It was so relatable to the topic and you never deviate from the topic. So you uh, structured your speech in such a way that you are just uh, telling us like how I compete myself in uh, past and compared myself with my performance and then conquer, conquer. There was a good use of prop, the book which you wrote. So congratulations on that too. There was some movement uh, which kept the audiences engaged. So you were not standing at a point and deliver your speech. You were moving also and that was making us more attentive to your speech. So your language was also very clear. So whatever you were speaking, we were hearing it very clearly. So it was very clear from the first word of the speech. So congratulations on that. Now I'll come to uh, the points which you can work on. I noticed that uh, uh, whenever you were explaining the two phases of your life, it was connected with coming to. So when you uh, finished your one phase and you were uh, coming to the next phase, you were telling that, okay, coming to this, coming to that. So you there, were, uh, there was a lot of use of coming to. So this was one thing. Second thing which I noticed is the eye contact. So you were only talking to the right hand side of the audiences and uh, uh, the eye contact was not constant in the room, throughout the room. Uh, I also noticed that there was a, a, a certain uh, stage fear on uh, on your part. So I think that can be uh, that can be overcome by more practice. So that is not a very big thing, but you can work on it. The voice was also low. So I was sitting here, I can hear you properly. I, I don't know whether the people at the back can hear it or not, but it was low. Initially, the, uh, your one hand was in pocket, so but you corrected it later, so that was a good point. Now I just want to tell you and uh, wrap up my evaluation by telling you the challenge yourself section. I can suggest that please smile when you are delivering the speech because it will calm you and engage the audience. So one thing is just please smile because in general you smile while you are giving the speech, please smile. Second thing is uh, as I told you just please practice so that you become more comfortable on the stage. Third is just improve your uh, voice level and keep writing such, such amazing, amazing speeches and keep inspiring us. Thank you and all the best. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Thank you. I think that was um, definitely one of the 
good speech evaluation that I've heard, uh, especially the part you know where the speaker delivered a speech and a speech evaluator points out certain thing. I'm always awestruck in listening to them because I wasn't able to pay attention to the tension that the speech evaluator has. And I think one common point that she also told is about smile. So whenever you're on the stage, please smile. Let's hear it from our speech evaluator number two, who's going to evaluate the speaker number two. Over to you, Gurshan. Good afternoon everyone. Afternoon. Whenever a science student listens to the thing like LHS is not equal to RHS, then the person gets worried. But today when I heard the title, I was not at all worried. Toastmaster Revity, congratulations to you on completing L1P3 of the path leadership development. I'll divide your evaluation within two parts. First, the good things which I noticed in your speech and then the areas of improvement. I'll start with the first pointer, engaging speech. You started with the story, you laid the foundation and you immediately asked a question that any one of the audience does have that friend of theirs uh, which they can remember, which is in context of your story and everyone related to one such name. And you gave a pause, you stayed for a moment and then everyone answered. Everyone was along with you. It's a very nice thing to have while you're speaking in front of the people out there. So kudos on that. Second thing which I cannot, uh, you know, forget to say is the pinch of humor you had in your speech. You uh, mentioned one question and you then gave three options for that. And the moment you choose the third option for yourself, then I, that I did not want to do anything. Everyone laughed with you. The, that moment of humor was relatable. So kudos on that. Third thing which I want to mention, there were a couple of good messages like you should not fall into the trap of judgments and assumptions. So that was a good message towards the end. Very good on that. Let's jump onto the bandwagon of areas of improvement. I feel like that there were some little extra long pauses in your speech. For example, when you were, you know, walking onto the stage. So it felt to me that you were thinking a little bit more. So I was assuming that there was a glitch somewhere. So you can work on that particular thing. So the pauses are really good, but still, if it, are, it is extra long, then uh, the, uh, the audience might feel that there is a glitch somewhere. Okay. The second thing I want to mention is about the ending. I felt that ending could have been a little bit better. You started with LHS is, equal, equal to, is not equal to RHS, but that circle was not completed. That circle was kind of incomplete. You could have given a little bit, uh, one or more instances about that. And then you can uh, kind of justify that LHS is not equal to RHS. Okay. For the third point, uh, please don't feel that I am finicky here, but uh, in your speech you mentioned the phrase dear Toastmasters and guest two to three times, which is not required. Maybe one or maximum two is okay at the end, not in the interval of one to two paragraphs only. Okay, so this was about the areas of improvement and regarding the challenge which I, which I want to give you. One challenge which this particular project L1P3 offers is to come out with your vocal variety. You can use the highs and the lows in your speech. You could have asked the question like, do you remember any friend of yours which has the similar story? You can use that voice, right? So that challenge you can use and you can work on this particular thing and you know, come up, come up with more better speeches. All the best for your upcoming speeches. Thank you. Thank you so much. As I mentioned earlier, right, uh, there are these points that uh, our speech evaluator will have it for the speaker. And I'm always uh, in a situation where like, oh, how could they nitpick something from the speech? The amount of details that they're noticing, right, when the speaker is speaking, with the moment that is happening, and what all suggestions that require. Imagine Akshay mentioned that you spoke, dear Toastmasters and guests so many times. I was so much in the feeling of the speech that I don't even know if she mentioned that or not. So that's a power of a speaker as well as a power of a speech evaluator. Can we have a round of applause for both the speaker and both the speech evaluator? Now we do happen to have a team who will now provide their report one by one. So I would request the timer to please come on the stage and provide your time report. Toastmasters are with them. Thank you. Good afternoon again. 
so I, i hope like you all uh, followed my story so everyone all are in time except one person i will give my report for the table topic uh, session sukesh took 1 minute 25 seconds our guest saurav took 1 minute 10 seconds our toastmaster saurav took 1 minute 58 seconds uh, trilogen uh, took 1 minute mansa took 50 seconds akshara took 1 minute 35 seconds myself avindan took 1 minute 10 seconds ankit took 1 minute 20 seconds kumar took 1 minute 35 seconds and in the in prepared speeches section konda took 5 minutes 30 seconds revadi took 5 minutes 14 seconds and in the evaluation part monika took 3 minutes 10 seconds akshay took 3 minutes 10 seconds there is one time based disqualification other than that everything is fine back to you. thank you so much give us a minute thank you um that was definitely a time report i believe uh, dear timer let's forgive those who could not uh, complete the given time limit so i think everybody would be qualified for today's voting considering the person was a guest is that okay with you yeah, yeah? all right cool thank you so that was a time report in case you are wondering what a timekeeper does to a meeting and i'll tell you my own learning from it i used to play this role often reason because when you sit there and you time somebody else then that's the time when you exactly know how much should i speak and how do i time myself how many guys from corporate over here corporate people work at corporate offices okay at least worked with offices before yes so you know those mds and directors and everybody else who will come and sometime they will have no track of time they will start speaking and they will keep going on and on and on and you'll wonder i wish i have gone to a chai point drink chai instead of listening to this guy and that whole um, you know reason of me taking a time keeper role in a toastmaster meeting taught me the importance of time and importance of speaking how much of a time do we need to present it initially then midpoint and towards the ending so each role that we take in toastmasters meeting does serve value elsewhere let's hear it from our our counter for today's meeting toastmaster sevanan over to you for your report thank you azhar good afternoon everyone so here i am presenting the our counter report for today's meeting starting with prepared speeches speaker 1 konda and speaker 2 revathi both are resonating with one fresh word or filler words revathi used one repeat sentence so now coming to the table topics sukesh used two crutch words gust saurav used 10 times crutch words Toastmaster Saurav, the dog lover, used three times. Triloj used six times. Manasa ten times. Akshara seven. Arvindan three times. Ankit eight. Kumar thirteen. And then coming to the evaluators, Monica and Akshay again resonating each at five. Thank you. because i love standing in the corner i sometimes feel like a coach of a football team <laughs> and to run all the way around to come to the field as soon as possible um so with an arc counter as a role if you guys must have noticed somebody was paying close attention to everything occurred from you whether it was an a a long pause or a short unnecessary pause crutches that we all use the words that he as an account of felt you were repeating as i mentioned we sometime have uh, a possibility of even using a uh, that i just did by the way the best scenario by the way in case if you want to hear a uh, nums how many of you guys have seen cricket cricket matches cricket matches seen cricket matches you don't have to be a fan seen cricket matches okay there's something after the match happened we call it a post match summary post match summary yes especially during the one day matches when i used to watch it they would call both the team captains So I believe, if I'm not wrong, the first captain would be the losing team captain that they would call, and they'll ask them what really went wrong. And there was one such match that I remember between two teams, where the both captains took unnecessary pauses and ahs and ums. India and Pakistan were playing. Pakistan lost that day, 
and then they asked the captain as to what happened and then he did say whatever he could for the number of hours and ums and even our team captain by the way and you can actually relook at any post match summary you will apparently hear this a lot uh, uh, you know uh. so this is a great example of when you take up a role of an our counter you exactly know what to avoid so speaking better our counter does help time management told you about the time let's hear it from our grammarian for today's meeting to see where we did good and where we can improve amal over to you good afternoon good afternoon so all the speakers and guests i think they did exceptionally well so few points that i have highlighted here so i'd just like to bring up on so i'll start with the speaker one konda so i do uh, agree and resonate with what monica suggested about usage usage of coming to work so that has been used multiple times so we could uh, used it alternatively with moving on or with regards to so that can be improved upon and uh, other than that all was good now coming to the speaker two revati i think you did exceptionally well a uh, few pronunciation that can be improved upon like you told quitting i think for the quitting uh, quitting jobs right and uh, then at one stage you told to become engineering rather than to become an engineer so these are the two things that i have uh, noticed and just wanted to bring it out yeah so monica i think that was like 4 uh, 6 seconds came <laughs> all of a sudden from your mouth so that's uh, uh, nothing uh, to worry about yeah and i think akshay used resonate and your speech was very good so no nothing i could uh, find out that is that not according to the uh, year it's different from what is expected and uh, yeah radha also did very good and coming to the table topic speakers i think we have used few words very well like uh, hilarious uh, in the right context i'd say, uh, like to say and in the correct perspective also uh, humorous was used and uh, bizarre was used by one of the speaker so yeah apart from that i don't have anything so uh, everything is good thank you so much Thank you so much, Dosma Samal. Um, that was a wonderfully presented report. And I, as a speaker, the time when I take it on the stage, I'm always looking forward to hear from all three the tag team members. These guys are, um, you know, last but definitely not the least. And I think all three of them definitely deserve a better round of applause. So thank you so much. The story. that i started as a toast master of the day how many of you remember the two words that i use confidence confidence and believe so i only could understand confidence and believe 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 in confidence right and i said there were too many thing that comes in between right that that makes the whole bridge but those bridges to cross over there are many obstacles i talk about karoli as a person while he was a sergeant he lost his dominant hand for a 25 meter pistol shooting practice enough with his left hand went to olympics a question to all of you how many people do you know forget about yourself if it all you want to consider among the people you know not the celebrities who can go to an olympic and win a gold medal raise your hand no judgment go to an olympic and win gold medal one such hand the room is full with doubt better be it's olympic it's a person who represent the country country of million billion of people when you don't think it's easy how would kurali think it would have been easier for him to win with his non dominating hand to your surprise the hungarian not only won one olympic gold but two let that sink in if you feel that anything that you planning to do and the entire moral of the story of this whole 
theme that I set over here is for you to know that there aren't any obstacle which are too great to conquer with determination and hard work and hard work becomes the key anything is possible when he lost his right hand don't you think people must have told him Crowley done not possible you're really good with your right hand right hand is gone can you do the left hand I don't think so buddy it's fine he was told to even retire from the place that he was in army with this guy never gave up somebody told the book that they will write the title will be never give up easier said that done you feel there are obstacles in life look at them compare it with what people had even if that doesn't give you the motivation enough what should give you the motivation enough that you woke up the next day to at least think through to at least practice through to put up a plan together to see if this can be worked or not we all think of new year as a resolution time it's already been five months how many of you are even halfway through think through you don't have to give an answer you don't have to give an answer think through are we all set to say oh the world or the or the entire year just gonna go to the end I'll think about something else I definitely do know people sitting right here in this room who are preparing for something big I know the challenges that they face it's not easy anytime you want to think your challenges are big enough ask them what they're going through and how are they modeling it the idea at Toastmaster is to learn something to gain something for your own self whether you come on the stage or you look at people because I personally believe life is too short to learn from your own mistakes learn from others as much as possible implement practice become better all set yes. motivated enough yes. Toastmaster Mazair is an okay motivator yes, yes? all right cool agree with me yes all right now what we're gonna do I'm gonna request a guest to come over here and help me with the voting you guys all remember the voting so what I'm gonna do if I'm okay it's if it's okay with the floor and rather I will not go with the voting for the best role player considering I am been on the stage for a little longer if it's okay with you otherwise we can go on a voting okay. it's only gonna be two of us in the voting like yeah are you okay yeah yeah that category will just eliminate it considering this will give me some advantage and I and I you know absolutely love the way how you conducted so for me my vote goes to you right yeah. huh? leave, it. leave it yeah all right cool so we will do a voting is there any guest can who can come over here next to me who hasn't spoken today guest who did not speak today I can think of you and I can think of you can you please both come over here I'll help you uh, you also can come over here okay so we're gonna do a voting the voting gonna be simply done by the raise of hand these are my left hand and right hand because uh, they will notice you now first thing we will close our eyes second thing I will ask all of you to raise your hand for the person who you want to vote for so we will vote in the category of best speaker you heard two speakers best speech evaluators two speech evaluator right best supporting role player which is among the three timer our counter and grammarian and then we will simply move on to the best table topic speaker I'll read the name you can raise your hand only once is that okay so you will close their eyes while they will keep it open they both will count so we'll give the name and you give me the result later is that okay can you open your phone and just we'll start with the names are you guys all set we'll make it as quick as possible sure may I request all of you to please close your eyes all of you you can notice if anybody opens go and knock them off close your eyes we will now go on with the category of best speaker for today's meeting this is among the two please raise your hand if you would like to vote for speaker number one Konda Down the number yeah. of hands. Okay, done. Thank you. You can lower your hand. Please go on now if you would like to vote for the speaker number two, Toastmaster Revti. Please raise your hand. Thank you. You can lower your hand. 
We will go on now with the category of the speech evaluator. Raise your hand if you'd like to vote for speech evaluator number one, Toastmaster Monica. Please raise your hand. Thank you so much. Lower your hand. Please vote for speech evaluator number two, Toastmaster Akshay. Raise your hand if you'd like to vote for speech evaluator number two, Toastmaster Akshay. Thank you so much. We will now go on with the category of best supporting role player. This is among the three. Please raise your hand if you'd like to vote for Toastmaster Aravindan as a timer for today's meeting. Raise your hand for Aravindan. Thank you. Please raise your hand if you'd like to vote for our counter Toastmaster Saranan. Thank you. Please raise your hand if you'd like to vote for Grammarian Toastmaster Amal. Thank you so much. Now we will move on to the category of best table topic speaker. This is among all. Let me know in case if I miss someone. Please raise your hand if you would like to vote for table topic speaker number one, Sukesh. Thank you. Number two, guest Saurav. Please raise your hand if you'd like to vote for guest Saurav. Thank you so much. Moving on to our member, Toastmaster Saurav. Please raise your hand if you'd like to vote for Toastmaster Saurav. Number four, guest Trilochan. Please raise your hand if you'd like to vote for guest Trilochan. Thank you. We'll now move on to guest and speaker number five, Mansa. Please raise your hand if you'd like to vote for Mansa. Thank you. We'll now move on to number six, guest Akshara. Please raise your hand if you'd like to vote for Akshara. We'll move on now. To the seventh speaker, Toastmaster Aravindan. Raise your hand for Toastmaster Aravindan. Thank you so much. And the last, we will now move on to guest Ankit. Please raise your hand for guest Ankit. Thank you so much. Um, you can stay over here and you can please take your seat. We will now do the result for today's meeting. Requesting uh, our table topic master, if she can hear me, to please come back. <laughs> Thank you so much. So the best speaker for today's meeting, the award goes to... Congratulations, Toastmaster Revti. Thank you so much. The best speech evaluator, the award goes to Toastmaster Monica. Congratulations. Thank you. The best auxiliary role player or a supporting role player, the award goes to our counter, Toastmaster Sarvanan. Congratulations. Among the best table topic speaker, the award goes to our guest Akshara. Congratulations. <laughs> Can we all come in here and squeeze in? We'll take a picture. Okay, stomach in, smiles out. Thank you so much. Guys can take a seat. Congratulations. I think our speakers definitely deserves a better round of applause, guys. Come on, congratulations. Thank you so much. 
Um, I have uh, quick updates as a presiding officer and important announcement that I'm doing. So my role as a table, as a to as a Toastmaster day is over. I've motivated you guys enough, haven't I? Yes. yes. You can also ask me what was my new year resolution outside of the meeting. Announcement number one, our next week meeting will take place on a Sunday from 11 to 1. That's going to be our meeting number 68. But a day before that, which is on Sunday, so Sunday, a day before that is Saturday, April 27th is a division level contest taking place at Indranagar. There's a company called First American. It's a free event. It's a division level contest where you will witness the table topic, speech evaluation and international speech contest. Many members and guests from our club are going. In case if you would like to go there, please connect with me outside the meeting today. Registration is important. Please note it's a free event. There will be some sort of a snacks as well. It's going to be a longer program, about four to five hours, but on Saturday morning. So if you would like to participate as a role player, if you're a member, let me know. We do have one or two roles open. If you'd like to simply go and attend and witness it, let us know. Two people from our club are basically contesting at a division level. Toastmaster Veshak for international speech contest and Toastmaster Mazahir for table topic as well as speech evaluation. Apart from that, we have an important announcement for our district level um, event that happens called Coronation. It's on May 24th, 25th or 25th, 26th. Whichever is a Saturday or Sunday, just forgive me on that. Uh, tickets are available. Let me know if you guys would want to. This is happening at Royal Orchid Convention Center near Yalahanka. It's pretty much in Bangalore. Let me know if you guys would like to attend that. Right? I hope you guys enjoy today's meeting. Yes. 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 Super. I like the yes which goes in the last. Alright, so the great thing is that we will be ending our meeting a minute early. However, one general request that I have that we need to make sure that we start our meeting on time. So whether you are a guest or a member, please do try to come to our meeting on time. We will take a picture with all of our members and guests together. After that, we'll do a picture with only the guests and there are some snacks that we have available. Please do eat, enjoy and network. On that note, let me finish or officially close the meeting number 67 for Whitefield Toastmaster. Thank you.